Today you will learn 10 important facts about how to use the lasso tool. Hello my friends, my name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer from Vienna, Austria and let's get started. So the lasso tool you can find here on the left where all of your tools are. If you don't see this little lasso here or as it's otherwise called freehand selection tool, um, it might be hidden behind these other selection tool, rectangle tool, elliptical tool, all of those. So uh, click and hold, so you get these, this pop-up menu and then select the lasso down here. And up here you have all these kind of tool settings and informations to work with. The first one is the freehand tool. And um, this is especially useful if you feel um, comfortable drawing a selection with a free hand or you have an iPad or you have one of these graphic tablets with a pen where you can easily select something, then this is a pretty quick way. Let's zoom in here a little bit and you can see I can just draw around this shape and try to get the edge. I'm using a mouse so you can see it's not the most exact way to do that. It's better really when you have a graphic tablet or iPad, something like that, where you can really draw on the screen. So let's hit Control D to deselect and let's go to the second mode, which is one of my favorite modes and that's called polygonal um, mode for some reason. What it does actually is that, I mean, you're drawing polygons, so that's the right name, but I would call it differently because basically what you do is lines. So with this um, selected, with every click, you make a point and you get a straight line between these points. And this is really useful, as you can see, because it's super fast and it's very precise. And when you make enough points, it does look pretty round, uh, even on round edges. So that's pretty nice. And another thing that's useful with this mode is that you can use your space bar and you can move the picture around if you need to go to an area that is outside of the area that you have seen before. And this is something that actually I even didn't know about in Affinity Photo because I use it normally in a different way. What I do is I have the freehand mode and then you can hold the shift key and with the shift key you can also make these straight lines. So this is what I used to do but with this I can't use my spacebar because I would press two buttons at the same time and then it would just make a selection. So this is a lot more useful to have this polygonal mode. So for these kind of selections that very, very that's very very useful. Okay let's go to the third type. That is an interesting type, it doesn't really work that well and um, you can, you should use it in special cases because the magnetic uh, mode is used where you have edges with a high contrast. So you can see here I click once and then I don't click again and it's selecting the edge on its own, it's trying to find the edge but as soon as I come here the tool is getting confused by these other lines so it's not working anymore. So this is only really useful when you have a shape where there is a really high contrast um, to be easily found by this kind of magnetic tool, magnetic selection tool. I would wish they had some settings where I can set how, um, how do you say, precise it should be or how, um, how high the resonance should be. I'm not finding the right word right now, sorry. Okay, but you can see this is not very useful in these cases. What it is useful for is when you have something with a high contrast, let's make uh, two shapes here. Let's make a round shape in the middle, make it a different color. There we go. And now if I use the magnetic mode up here, um, I click once and then I can quickly move around the edge with my mouse. I don't even have to be very precise and it's selecting this. And you can see this works very well because there's a very high contrast because uh, between these two colors and between these two shapes. Speaking of shapes, what you can see up here also uh, for the modes is that you have new, add, subtract and intersect. So those are very important and um, this is how you use them. Let's go back to the freehand tool so I can pl explain it a little bit quicker um, and go up here where we have 
it's easier to see. So with new, when I make a selection, you can see this makes a selection. Every time I click, it makes a new selection. So it doesn't remember the old selection. And this might be bad um, for reasons where you want to have uh, several selections after another because you want to select several areas in your picture because you want to take a break between selections. You want to have something where you can add multiple selections and this is what this second mode does add and the good thing about add is not only can i make selections in different areas you can see here now i have three different selections in different areas if i if they overlap they also add to each other as you can see here now i have a combination of these two selections which is very useful uh use useful sorry Especially when I want to add something. So you can see here, for example, there's an area that is um, not selected but should be selected. I can go in here and edit afterwards. And of course, I can also switch between these. So if I go to Substruct, I can also go in here and subtract areas that I don't want to have selected. These are not very clean selections right now. I'm just showing you how it works. You can see here, I can just cut out different kind of areas. And now we come to the last mode and this is called the intersect mode. And uh, let's make one selection here. Whoops, sorry. Let's go to new. Let's make one selection here. And now when I go to the intersect mode, if I draw a second selection, it will only keep the part in the middle where both of them are intersecting. You can see this is just the middle ground of those two uh, selections. So that is maybe not apparently obvious why this could be useful, but I want to show you something uh, with another tool. Let's draw another rectangle up here. I will make it black so we can see better what I'm doing. Okay. And now if I, for example, use the elliptical tool and I set it to intersect. So let's make one shape first. You can see I have a circle here. And then if I use the intersect mode with this tool, you can see if I draw out my selection, it will only show the intersecting area. And with this, as you can see, you can have really strange and interesting shapes um, for the selection. So that is pretty nice. And... That is also something that you could not easily do with the other modes like add or subtract. So um, to have these kind of special selections to get these kind of special shapes, as you can see here, looks a little bit like a Spider-Man eye. If you want to create a character like that, that might be a very useful um, kind of tool for that. Okay, let's go to the other elements that we still have not explained up here. There is still um, more. Feather is important, anti-alize is important, and refine is also very important. To explain this, I will um, disable the picture. So we just have our rectangle here. Let's make this um, let's make this smaller and also rasterize it so it's pixeled. There we go. Now it's in pixel. And now if we use the tool, you can see here. Um, well, let's explain. Let's explain. A feather first there we go so I make a selection whoops wrong mode again I make a selection as you can see here and now I go control C to copy it control V to um, put it in the picture on the canvas you can see here we have made a selection and you can see of course now we have sharp edges as we of course want to have with most selections um, but if you want to have a blurred selection, which is also useful in many cases, you can set it right here uh, with Feather. And the important thing to notice is you have to set it before you make the selection. If you change Feather after you make the selection, it will for some reason not impact the selection. So this has to be set beforehand. Um, so let's set this, for example, let's write in here, let's set this to five. Pixels, for example, I make a selection and then again, uh, control C, control V, uh, control D to deselect. And if I move this, whoops, did I not? Okay, apparently I did not make a selection because I was on the wrong layer. Let's do this again. There we go. 
mm -hmm. deselect and there we have our selection you can see the edges are blurred so that is very nice a very nice feature that you can do right while you are selecting although what I would suggest to you is not use this up here and instead make a normal selection and then go up here to your settings for selection and here you have feather again but now you can apply to select to the selection you already have and this is very useful because you can see a little bit um, how it is changing uh, by making it more feathered or softer you can see uh, because the outline is changing sadly um, affinity photo does not show you um, the difference so you can't really see it but you can can kind of guess it from the change of the um, this kind of moving line here so let's apply this uh, control C control V control D to deselect and I was again on the wrong layer okay let's do this again with the right layer there we go deselect and move it over here and you can see now this is a lot more blurred a lot softer edge okay um, the next thing that is really important um, and is very easily overlooked with uh, selections is anti-aliasing and I want to explain to you what that is I'm not going to use uh, the lasso tool for that although it also works with the lasso tool but it's easier to see it with the elliptical tool so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off anti alize and I'm going to make a circular selection here there we go and I will copy this over to here and then I will make a second circular selection let's go there we go oh one second I turn on anti alize I will make a second circular selection also copy this and move it over and then we zoom in and what you can see here is with a normal selection without anti aliasing on um, if you have a curve the curve is still represented in pixels and the pixels as you can see here they have hard edges um, where they are actually ending so this is a very sharp and correct edge and this is how actually the edge looks even if it is um, round even if it's a curve everything you see on your screen is made of pixels and the pixels are square so it's always in these kind of steps but if you have anti-aliasing on what that does is it kind of blurs them out you can see here it creates additional pixels with lesser and lesser opacity and this will make it look less blocky and a lot sharper so if we go to 100% here you can see that here you can see these sharp edges and here it looks to the eye pretty round pretty smooth so that's pretty nice you see a little bit of steps still but it is still it is very sharp it's a big difference um, so this is why you should use that maybe not always because sometimes you really want the sharp edges but in most cases especially when you have curves in your selection you want to use anti alize so this was all to know about the lasso tool all the kind of different modes that you have to use that kind of tool as you can see it's really useful oh by the way up here there's one more it's refine you can use refine with any kind of um, selection you're doing uh, let's go into that real quick and there is something you really should look out for um, let's make a selection up here whoops uh, let's make a selection real quick by the way oh there's one thing I still have to tell you and this is when you have the polygonal mode like I have right now and it makes these lines when you hold the shift key it turns into a magnetic mode so um, yeah okay this wasn't what I wanted to do let's make a new selection real quick there we go so if you have this kind of selection let's go up here let's close this and now you click refine it will like with other selection tools you can refine um, the selection 
with all these kind of settings. I'm not going to explain these right now because this is a different kind of tutorial. Um, the one thing although to point out here is that you have this overlays so you can turn to black and white and really see how the selection is looking. And what you see right now is that refine is even if you don't click any of these settings even if you don't do anything refine is changing your selection and personally i think it doesn't really work very well i hope um, serif is really updating this kind of functionality you can see here it's really pixelated and um, kind of rough and it's, it looks very different. So if you use the lasso tool, maybe don't use the refine function because not working very well. It's mostly used um, with the selection brush uh, that is found over here. I will explain this in another episode. And by the way, the next episode will be about the selection settings or changes up here, especially those down here. Grow and shrink, feather, smooth, refine edges and outline what they are doing because they are very important also to use with any kind of selection tool. But this was the explanation for how to use the lasso tool and the different options that you have. Thank you very much for watching. If you like my tutorials, maybe subscribe to my channel. I do two tutorials per week. And if you want to support me even more, head over to Patreon where you can find even more good things like my files with all the layers. Um, you can get feedback on your works and we can talk about topics that are interesting to you. Thank you very much and see you soon. Bye.